Okay. Hello. Uh, yes. Okay. So we're going to be talking about NIP 46 uh, implementation is NSEC Bunker. Um, NIP 46, okay, it was uh, Tiara's idea. Uh, it's called Nostra Connect, which is a really bad name, in my opinion. Uh, it doesn't have like any fruit name. So. It doesn't end with stir. <laughs> I know. What's, what's up with that? Um, and the basic idea of NIP46 is, uh, is to do a, like a remote signing, which when I saw it, I thought this is a brilliant idea, and I immediately implemented it. I was working on a, on a website called psvt.io, which is just like a delayed broadcasting uh, of Bitcoin transactions. And I wanted to implement NIP46, but this thing has nothing to do with Noster. So I just created a chat widget and, and added NIP46 to the chat widget, and then the chat widget became uh, Nostri chat. Um, so yeah, the, the idea of remote signing, I think it's super, super, super important and very underplayed. <laughs> okay, now, Hololbot, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Pablo. Oh yeah, I'm Hololbot. I have uh, implemented NIP46 via Pablo's code, which qualifies to me on a, <laughs> qualifies me to be on a panel, I guess. You also build Coracle. I build Coracle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a podcaster mainly. <laughs> yeah, mostly. I don't do much coding nowadays. Um, I'm Jeff. Uh, I have very recently implemented NIP46 in Lister, um, and yeah, let's do it. All right. So. I think the reason why NIP46 is so, so important is that the, the, one of the magic parts of, of Nostr is this interoperability. Now, of course, you need to have keys to be interoperable, otherwise, what's the interoperability you're doing? Um, so that means that you need to have a way to sign easily to sign across a vast amount of different clients. We don't want people to just stay in one client, in Damos, in Primal, in Coracle. It's, it's like, what's the point of, of, of Noster? And we also don't want people to put their insects everywhere. But that's, that's how it has been done so far. People are just pasting your insect everywhere. Basically, none of my applications, other than Insect Bunker, allow you to paste an, an insect because I don't want people doing that. Um, and I, I don't want to continue promoting the idea that this is the way you, you use Noster. We got, the, so the evolution of just pasting your NSEC everywhere is uh, just use an Impo7 extension, Getalvi, Nos2x, or, or something like that, which is really good, and I think it, it, it's a step function improvement, but I, I think most people are not going to be able to, like normies, if we think, okay, how do we get to a billion users? I don't think people are going to be, like the billion users are going to be, have the know-how of, okay, I need to install this, uh, and I need to put my insect here, and it's encrypted with this password. I, it's a little bit too confusing, and particularly in mobile, it doesn't really work. Um, in iOS, we have no store, but it's, it's, it's a very complex experience. I was literally just trying to help someone about an hour ago with this exact same thing, and I was like, as I was explaining it, I was just like, this is so hard. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I mean, imagine if you wanted to get on Twitter and you had to install a different app, branded differently, made by someone else, in order to store your password there. I mean, we have password managers, and some of these patterns are promising. Like, uh, you got Spring Browser as well, which builds in Nippo 7 extensions into the browser itself. So I think that can be of limited utility, but of course, for any native application, you're outside of your wrapper, and so uh, you have to put your insect, bunk or your insect into at least two places in order to do uh, what you want to do in multiple different places. So yeah, I mean, uh, the only way to step outside of that is to have an always on service that uh, custodies it for you. And uh, now we introduce all the problems of custody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which was gonna happen anyway. Um, the, the, the problem I see with something, and, and I, I do agree that the spring approach is interesting, is just, it's not an onboarding tool. Like, no one says, oh, I'm going to try this browser. Uh, unless you're like a browser freak and you have, you know, Brave and, you know, Firefox and whatever else. Uh, people are interested in, in an application. Like, they have a use case in mind and they want an application that serves that use case. So you don't start with, I'm going to download, like, I'm fascinated by downloading Nostr browsers. <laughs> um, so, but, but, 
people do wake up thinking, I want to listen to, I, I want to try a new music client or a, a new music application or a new video application. That, that's something that might move people. Um, so I think it's a, it's a useful tool for people that are already deep in it. Deep in the But ecosystem. if you can imagine that pattern though of just your browser has the thing built in and it's just part of using a browser, right? Like it's like you sign into your browser with, you know, like with Chrome at least and Brave, you sign in with your Google account and then like it's just used all over the place. Yeah. Um, so it's a pattern that will work once it's reached mainstream adoption, which again gets back to where we are not right now and then why we need something like Insect Bunker. Actually, how many people know what, like when we say remote signing or Insect Bunker, like how many people know what Insect Bunker is? Okay, good, most people. Um, just do, I'll do a quick refresh for everybody else. Um, so Insect Bunker is basically a custodial thing that holds your private key to keep it safe and keep it, it in. It can be a custodial It thing. can be a custodial it's thing. It's one do it yourself. command line to install it and yes. you could one click install it in like a digital ocean or something like that. So yeah. It's super easy. No I did ones. it last week. It's no big deal. We're but the point is, is that um, it is a single place where your private key lives. And then it has the ability to communicate with all other clients via Noster messages as the transport protocol um, to do signing on events that are created in different clients. So it's just a way to uh, decrease your exposure or decrease the exposure of your insect. Just to mention some other possibilities too, not super like core to this discussion necessarily, but uh, it also also opens up the possibility of having different scoping mechanisms, yes. um, as well as uh, a way to share shared keys. So yep. you know you can hire your marketing intern and let them post for your company without sharing your company's NSEC with your intern. Right. Yeah, and also having um, a log of who signed what. Like if you're sharing your key, sharing your account with 100 employees, you want to see who tweeted like a dick pic or something like that. You, you, want to, you, you want to know what happened. And you can also, because it's basically you can run HSM policies, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can execute code that this, the, decides whether to allow a signature to happen or not. Um, you can des decide, okay, for this employee, they can only like things, or they can only repost things, but they can only, they cannot write, they cannot change the profile picture, for example, of this account, uh, which is fundamental. If we're thinking about a company, you cannot give a blank check for all your social media managers to do anything they want with your, with your company account. Will we go through the little diagram since we spent so much time making it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a very professional this, diagram. This was made in about two and a half minutes before we started this. Yeah, so the way it works is very complex <laughs> because there is a bunch of keys uh, going around and signing for things. When you use it, I mean, the current interface that I wrote, it was like a prototype, and I wrote it very, very quickly. Um, so it's quite confusing. Um, now NIP46 is getting more interest and, and adoption, so I think it's time to revamp these things. Um, so yeah, it, once you use it as a user, it's not as weird, but we have a bunch of things. So the first part on the left, um, the first part is the admin side. So when you deploy an, an NSEC bunker, you, you need to put your NSEC or create an NSEC within the, the NSEC bunker. Uh, and you must put a passphrase to encrypt, locally encrypt the, 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 the key. Um, so in order to talk to the NSEC bunker daemon on the back end, uh, the, okay, this is where it starts to get confusing. So the, um, the NSEC bunker key, when you create a new NSEC bunker, it uh, generates its own key. That key means, doesn't mean anything, it's just a way to, for, for the bunker to have a pub key so you can talk to it, you can encrypt to the bunker. Um, and then you have an admin key, which is the key that you would normally use, uh, is the key that you have in your, in your Geraldi on your nos 2 x is the key that you decide to administer the, the bunker with. Then when you deploy the bunker, you can create a bunch of accounts. So for example, on my bunker, I have my, um, my NSEC. I have the NSEC of Highlighter, the NSEC of Purple Pages, the NSEC of um, a family account that I run where I just, 
use like like an Instagram type of account. Um, so I, I run a, a few different type of accounts. Um, my key, Pablo key, is the admin of that whole bunker, but that bunker has a bunch of what we call target keys. It's the keys that you want to sign as. Um, so from this admin interface, you can create tokens. And the tokens was um, a cool idea that now made it into the uh, into the into the NIP into the NIP 46. And the basic idea is you want to be able to say to gre to give like a, a token, uh, a one-time use token that uh, anyone can use to redeem for permissions to do something with that key, which could be sign for everything or encrypt or decrypt or only sign one event per hour and only kind of one, stuff, stuff like that. On the right side, we have the flow of actually signing. So the best example would be, I have Coracle on my phone. It doesn't have an EPO 7 extension because I don't have an EPO 7 extension on my phone. Um, and I have an NSYNC Bunker deploy with my key. Now, I go in with my, um, with my admin key and I create a token and I name the token Coracle, Coracle Mobile, for example. Now, what happens on Coracle in my phone is the client will generate a local key. It doesn't show it to the user. The user doesn't even know that that's happening. It's just a random key. It doesn't mean anything. But when the, the Coracle talks to the NSEC bunker, again, all via an author relays, uh, when it talks to the, uh, to the NSEC bunker, it says, this is my pub key. It's just a random pub key that is just created. And this is my token. This is my secret. Now, the banker says, OK, this secret gives you these permissions. So it whitelists, basically, that, that the pub key of the Coracle that the user has never seen. It will never see them. Um, it whitelists to have a authorization to do things. And importantly, that. Uh, it's kind of, it's not a throwaway pub key that Coracle created. Um, it's an actual key that Coracle needs to keep track of because when you come back, because you've used that connection token, you've used it the one time it can be used. And so if you have to do it again, you've got to go get another connection token and, you know, connect that up to the insect bunker. Just to relate it to other uh, protocols, this is like a device key, uh, you know, Scuttlebutt. Uh, only had device keys. Uh, there was no way to relate them to a overarching identity across multiple de devices. And this is basically just kind of pragmatic uh, key delegation, where if Coracle is uh, compromised and that private key is exfiltrated, all it has is authorization to have the, the real private key sign on its behalf, uh, but that can be revoked because you have uh, dynamic control. Yeah, this is a way of doing what you could also do cryptographically uh, in, in a way that is more synthetic uh, and that works with what we currently have. But functionally, you have the same, right? Like, you can give a bunch of keys to a bunch of different employees. Your main key has never been leaked, um, and you can revoke easily. Like, you can go to the admin and just delete key, and that's it. That key can never sign again. But the experience of the user is, I'm using Coracle. I never. I never installed this Nipo 7 thing. I don't even know what that is. Um, I, I didn't have to do anything weird. Uh, and I can just use Coracle just fine. I, on, on the flight to, to Miami, I was on the flight. I purposefully didn't bring my key, my NSIC. And I was on the flight using signing events from my node at home. Uh, and it works just fine. I mean, it's slow because it's an airplane. but. <laughs> um, but, but it works really well. It, it works really, really surprisingly fast. And, and the user experience, again, is all they have to do is put in this connection string um, that the admin of the insect bunker gave them. So you can imagine, again, the employee situation. You know, Pablo works for me now. Um, I'm your Join? boss now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just give him this string, and I'm like, put this into Coracle, and you're ready to go. It's got everything you need. Um, so there's no password, there's no username, there's no any of that stuff. You don't have to manage keys, you don't have to manage permissions. It's just done. Um, and then when I have to... And when he fires me, he Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's where I was going next. When I eventually have to fire Pablo for not doing his work, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I can just revoke the key and that's the end of it. I don't have to think about it anymore. 
Yeah, the user experience uh, is the part that's most exciting to me. And like, to be honest, the user experience right now, oh. I mean, you say it's good. It could be a lot better. It could be a lot, a lot better. A lot better. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that really confused me was when I lost that uh, that public key yeah. or the private key that was generated on the client, I had to reauthorize. Yeah. And then I had to go into NSEC Bunker's admin UI. So there's a lot of work to be done. But here, here's like my vision for where I, I would love to see this go. And if any of you guys out there want to hack on something and build this, you, well, this is a really good thing that you should to be build built. this. Yeah. Uh, let me just pitch my idea. I, have you thought about OAuth with NSEC? I was Wonder? literally okay. about to talk about this. I have okay. it on, on the Figma of Highlighter. I have an OAuth uh, mechanism to log in. Yeah, dude. Okay, that, Because so. that's what people are used to. Yeah. Like, the point of highlighter is bring normal. Okay, okay, right? slow down. Explain the idea. Yeah, so you, you know, if you couple a NSEC bunker and an OAuth flow with a NIPA5 provider, you can basically do sign in with NIPA5. So people know what an email address is and what it looks like. Uh -huh. You go to a client and it says log in with NIPA5. You put in your NIPA5, even if it's not the NIPA5 that you like actually use uh, with your pub key, it can just be a NIPA5. Yeah. And what it does is it provides a username and a domain. So the client can take the domain, dereference to a dot well known uh, URL or something, and then uh, start to uh, you know pull some pull some stuff out of there related to NIP46, and then broker that whole uh, connection string without the user ever having to do any copy exactly. pasting. Yeah. So they they have a human readable identifier that connects to a provider that they've already worked with, and you know maybe it's one that they're self hosting, uh, probably not. I mean. So you, you create a domain called nosterid.com or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you get people to sign up, and you know when they log in, there's no authorized applications. You go somewhere else, put your identifier in, and it brings you over, asks you about scopes. I mean, that's an OAuth thing. We can totally follow the OAuth yeah, spec it's, doing it's, this. Yeah, so. yeah, that's the right pattern. And it's it, again, it's super, super easy. It does all the right steps. It is familiar. It's great. Yeah, to be the point where it's familiar to people, it's a, it's a flow that people understand. And, and even when you go to, okay, I want to, I created this identity um, using an immediately authorized with Coracle. Uh, and now I want to sign it with the same thing, with the same identity on Primal. And, and you can have like a pop-up, like the typical Google or Twitter pop-up saying, do you want to authorize this, 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 and this, right? Um, and it's the same flow. It's just underlying is completely different, but it's the same flow. Uh, I, I don't know. To me, that, that sounds it's, it's very compelling because we, we already have a lot of different things on Noster. And when you onboard people that are not used to private key management and stuff like that, and you tell them, okay, you need to learn about relays, you need to learn about key management, it's too much, right? Um, if we can soften the, um, the learning curve, I, I think that's better. Yeah, custody is is fine for uh, low value, low risk situations. When you're just getting started with Noster, your key is totally disposable. So why not use a service that actually helps you keep it safe while you learn the while you learn learn the ropes? Same thing can be done. Uh, you know, if you have a service that's doing that, more features can be added to that software for the purposes of key management. So Pablo recently uh, created a PR for uh, key rotation. Uh, that same service, when you sign up, can uh, publish one of those uh, initial rotation uh, attestation events, um, and you know that's another thing the client or the user never has to see that uh, that these custodial solutions can take care of for you. And then moving moving your um, your key out of that custodial solution is as simple as putting it somewhere else. Now, of course, you can't prove that they've deleted it, so there is that. But no, yeah, but I was thinking about that because you could you could marry the two things, the new forty six and new forty one, which is the the key rotation thing, um, and when you offboard from the NSEC bunker, like the custodial NSEC bunker, you could immediately publish like, okay, and now this is gonna be my new key. I'm gonna continue using the, the one that was hosted, uh, was custodial, and, but I'm gonna end up moving in, in two months, I'm gonna end up moving to this new NPUB. Um, and it, it's, it's like a very soft, um, like, like, a, like a very soft onboarding process, right? Because you don't have to learn about keys at all. And once you are ready, you end up fully sovereign, and your NSEC has never been somewhere else. This is one of those places where I feel like having been built by Bitcoiners is hurting us, uh, because people are just so religious about, it's got to be totally self-sovereign, completely self-hosted, there's no other way. And yes, OK, we all agree with this. But at the same time, you have to just go, OK, everything's not perfect. And for low-risk situations, 
custodial is totally fine. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see that get built. Uh, yeah, I'd much rather see that than hardware signers. As cool as those 100%, are, like, yeah, I, agree. I can't think of a situation when you. No, would I'm going to pull out a hardware, hardware signer, signer, plug it into my phone, and like. So, so, fiddle so with what it. I want to no. do is, I, I already told, told MBK this, <laughs> that I, I want to build on on Satslink. Um, th did you see it? The, yeah, the hardware, device, like the yeah. Q1 looking. Uh, so, I, I want just use it as a as an insect bunker. Backend. Um, where the key is actually on the secure enclave, the, the secure element in the in the sets link, mainly because it's cool. <laughs> and you just have it in your backpack, and what it just like P2P. No, no, but 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 for you. but it's like it's connected, right? So oh, right. It's got because Wi-Fi. I, I yeah, did yeah, this yeah. a yep. few years ago, uh, like three or four years ago. I I I was living in Costa Rica. And and I decided for for fun, I wanted to move on my core lining, uh, you know core lining like the, the code itself. So it has an HES, HSMD module. So the, the key like it doesn't matter. The I, I wanted to put my key for my lining node inside a cold card and sign HCLCs from my cold card. Um, and I did that on an MK3, so it was very slow. Uh, so it didn't really like functionally it, it, it worked, but it was not practical. Um, but you could do something like that with Setslink and just yeah. sign all your events remotely from a Setslink, and it's yeah. pretty cool. You could also do something like Shipyard where you buffer all the requests until you have access to your key, and then you send all those out at once or schedule them. Yeah, so Ship Shipyard, Shipyard does that with when you connect an insect bunker, like you give it a token, um, it will try to sign when it knows when it needs to um, to publish the event. It will try to get the signature, and if it can't get it, um, it just will try again a bit later, uh, and it's cool if if you put a queue, and it, it, like the cadence of the queue, uh, Shipyard is like a publishing tool where you say, okay, I want to schedule this this node to go in two hours or next Thursday or something, um, and you can have a queue that has like a cadence of 24 hours. It's my good morning queue, right? Um, if you delete something from the queue, all the other events that were following that event that got deleted. Uh, they need to change the timestamp. Um, and then <laughs> it actually shows you that there is a missing signature, and then it tries to go and fetch the signature. So it has like a, like a cascading animation, like it's just organic, but it's just yeah. signed, 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 signed. It's, it's pretty cool. That's fun. Yeah, another thing that occurs to me that you could do with this setup is have keys that are only accessible in certain places. So like if you're on the company intranet, so you actually have to be in a physical place in order to sign an event as your key. Yeah, would also be interesting. Um, we could do this all day, but does anybody have any questions about specifically how to implement this? Or like we've kind of purposely not gone into the implementation detail. Um, I'm going to try and make a video next week because this is fresh in my mind of just like step by step go through how to do this. So yeah, question in the back. Yeah, I th I thought about that. Um, I I really like the the fact that it's Schnorr it gives you like that flexibility for free. Um, the way I thought it is, oh, I don't think we're there yet in, in re with regards to someone actually using it. Um, like barely NSEC bunker, barely anyone uses like th this method. Uh, Fiat Chef rewrote NIM46 because NIM46 was very poorly written. Uh, it was very hard to understand. I actually, when I tried to read it, I was like, I don't get it. So I just went to the code. And then Fiat Chef did the same thing. Um, so now it's been rewritten. Um, I know a few clients are, are looking into, into it, uh, which is a very good thing. Will told me that he's looking into making uh, demos a signer. So you could sign from like your Apple Watch, which is cool. Um, so, so yeah, but I, I think that's a really, really cool idea. Um, but yeah, probably too early for, for something like that still Pro, from, from a market demand perspective. Any other questions? Yeah. So I was looking at uh, NSF Bunker last week, and I wasn't really able to decide whether you anticipate the end user using NSF Bunker uh, directly, uh, or is it going to be like an API integration in the back end of the client? Um, it's not an A so the question is, is it going to be more the end user that's going to use um, 
Insect Bunker itself, or is there going to be more like an API integration? So one, there's no the API is Noster. Um, there is no other sort of API. But um, I, I guess probably for most users, uh, it's more the client that's running an Insect Bunker. And so for new users, they just create their keys in their Insect Bunker and then use that as the uh, the mechanism. Um, I think for most normal users, like spinning up your own insect bunker um, is probably beyond them, unless they're using like a hosted system like insectbunker.com, which is you go, you set it up, and you're actually setting it up on you know Pablo's infrastructure, but uh, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and multiple implementations of insect bunker, I mean, uh, of NIP46 really would be helpful to just to have different options uh, and to power different services. I mean, it's it's kind of like relay tools, right? It's yep. just it's just a relay uh, piece of software, but then they put a nice front end on it. So uh, NSEC Bunker's admin UI doesn't have to be the thing that everyone has to use. Right. And you know, what do you guys think about building NSEC Bunker into clients as, a, as like an admin UI? You mentioned Domus might be a signer, but like. Yeah, I, so I, I, I talked about this with, with Milian, um, and the way I see it, and maybe it happened, is the primal could run an insect bunker or, or, or buy one or whatever, but run an insect bunker where they are onboarding the, um, the new users that they're, they are onboarding into, into Noster. And that means that they can take all the key stuff from the UI at first, um, and the user still retains the ability of being interpreted. Like, like they can go to Coracle and without seeing keys, Without ever seeing keys, they can use Coracle with their identity that they created on on uh, on Primal, and they can go to Snort, and they can go to Lister, and they can go to a bunch of Sorry, new clients. Can I jump in here real quick to make something clear that might not be clear? So it doesn't matter which client created or has the Insect Bunker, as long as the Insect Bunker is connected to other relays or is like out there listening for the event types that are the signing requests. Um, you know, if I, in my Lister client, had an insect bunker where I was adding new users, and this is what Pablo's describing here, it wouldn't matter that somebody went and tried to use the same thing on a different client, because my insect bunker or my NIP46, uh, you know, signing thing would be there listening for any request. And as long as the permissions match the permissions that that, you know, token had, it would still work. Not really. The, the reason I started running that relay uh, and what, why I recommend that people use it um, is that other relays are really not reliable, uh, pun, on, on relay, <laughs> relaying uh, ephemeral events, um, so, which is what uh, NIM46 uses. So while I was writing it, I was finding that it, it barely worked. Like 10% of the time, it worked. And I was like, why? And just scratching my head. And, and then I said, okay, I'm going to just run a relay and debug that part. And then when I run my own relay that accepted and was, you know, played nicely with, uh, with these event kinds, it just worked. Did you write your own implementation or is no, it? No, I just, I just modify, I can't recall which one. No, I think, I think on a stream, one of those. Um, but, um, but yeah, there were two relays that worked well, um, mine and... The, the one that Tieto uh, was running, what was it? Uh, Bol Bolpem, I think it, it's called, his company. Um, but that's why that's the default. That's why that's the default. Got yeah, it. that's okay. because the, 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 those are the two relays that yeah. I know okay. play, work with the used to play nicely. Yeah. And he shut down his relay okay. a few weeks ago, and I had a bag on, <laughs> I had a bag on an insect bunker that made it, that if the connection to one of the insect bunker relays failed, then nothing worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but that, that's fixed now, and I removed keys. So really. one thing, though, that, that is actually a risk of this whole NIP46 signing thing. As soon as the bunker goes down, you can't do anything. Yeah. Like, you're blocked from signing any events or doing anything. So um, there are trade-offs here, obviously, like everything. Those are two different things, though. Yeah, I think so too. Well, yeah, it's, they're solving different problems. 
Um, I would, yes. Like I can actually see lots of people, you know, I think the umbrals and the Stark nines of the world are sort of normalizing this idea of like, you've just got this little appliance that you're going to get at some point and you're just going to plug it in and it is going to set up a bunch of services or it's already got the services ready to go and it manages all those things for you. So you're, you're running a Bitcoin node, you're running a lightning node, you're doing, you know, a, a bunch of things like that, that you don't have to think about. And like a Nostra relay and a Nostra signing, you know, uh, set up will potentially be part of that. And so I think it's, there are ways to make it definitely consumer grade and like really easy to do. Um, but yeah, for now, it, it makes much more sense for businesses or like places where you really don't want to lose your key um, rather than like the standard, you know, consumer stuff. I don't currently use it, but I, I totally would if the UI was a little bit better. Uh, it definitely beats putting your NSEC into every yeah. app. <laughs> Do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in comparable cases, you would be extremely low time uh, resetting mm -hmm. first. Uh, I would say you can pay and pass, right? It's more public because you don't have to do, you can do validation offline. But uh, for private systems such as Transform, uh, you, 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 you trace that. So, right now, uh, I imagine if I do trace all my conversations, I mean, personally, the, f and I'm guessing for 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 Waterflow, you you cache the you cache the events, right? Right, but, but it's uh, in version. Right. So, so the way I would do it is you you cache the same way, but you encrypt the cached version with the local key. So you decrypt it only once, right? Like you de remotely decrypt it once, and then when you keep it locally. It's encrypted, but with a local key, so you can decrypt it just fast. I think and without an EPO seven, it's yeah. just like literally you have the private key because it's local to your. There's also an easier way to do this, in my opinion, which would just be to uh, make sure that your UI only is decrypting stuff as it's visible. Um, so you know you're not trying to decrypt every single conversation in the thing, but like when you load one up, it you know you're decrypting just the first couple of messages or the last you know the most recent couple of messages. Um, so, I mean, I think there's probably a couple of ways you could do it. Yeah. There's and also it, a less simple way to do this, too, which would don't, be... <laughs> don't, don't I, I like, like your own libraries for... <laughs> no, no. I was thinking, you know, combine um, combine a relay, a relay proxy with uh, an NSEC bunker. So you basically entrust a special purpose relay to decrypt things for you so that, um, you know, not only can it deduplicate events from multiple relays like Multiplexer does, but it can also decrypt things uh, using your, your private key. Uh, that's probably a terrible idea, but uh, just, a, you know, a thought. It's another option. <laughs> I like it. The, the local client would need to know that, the, that it's doing that, right? Yeah. Like the proxy is decrypting for you. Yeah, I, I, I like that. The, the, the one thing with regards to encryption is did you know that with Nipo 7, you only can decrypt one at a time? And with this, you don't have to, right? <laughs> like, you can send it 500 events and decrypt all of these and give them back. And you don't have to do, like, decrypt, 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 which arguably, I, I have not tested this, but, but I know that, the, like, I, I've dealt with, like, the Nipo 7, and I, I actually, in, in NDK, when you call it, you don't have to concern yourself with queuing like the decryptions or the signing it's gonna queue them for you because I, I found that so obnoxious. Why, why, sorry a second. I don't understand this. So why you do, can't why do you, you can't, have to do it you can't call into the Nipple seven synchronously like multiple times. Because you just can't, because it, of how Nostra tools it's, is written. It's one sorry, it's just because of how Nostra tools is written. I maybe it's because of how get Albi is implemented. Oh right. Okay, yeah, yeah sorry. Because get Albi is like waiting for one at a time. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Albi oh did they Oh did they? Oh, I didn't know that. It's so annoying. Ah, uh, okay. okay. I'm okay. gonna remove that queue then because yeah, it's, it's like this <laughs> slowing go. down of things for no reason. Everyone's clients were broken for like four months, <laughs> with, like failed to decrypt for no reason. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, the, yeah. the, the multi-organization thing is the reason I built it. So what I had in mind for NSEC Bunker, I, at one point in the highlighter, I had like this totally unrelated thing, uh, which I'm gonna launch as a different product. Um, but it was like a sort of like Google Docs-ish. Um, and I wanted collaboration. I wanted people to be able to write uh, an encrypted uh, NIP23, an encrypted long form, uh, with multiple people at the same time. And yeah, I wanted to be able to have a history and all like all this stuff, but published as, as one. So yeah, collaboration is, is the why I built it. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like, in a sense, Active Directory or what's the more like modern ones, like the user team company management type stuff. Yeah, it's 100% that. Dude, but it's super, super important. Yeah, but Active Directory, you know, what's wrong with on, you? Man. Everybody knows what Active Directory is. So it's a great it metaphor. Up, it's a great example because everybody knows what it is. Yeah, to kind of like zoom out a little bit too, you know, this is just one more component that Pablo has invented. DVMs are another one. You know, Nostra started as clients and relays, basically. Yeah. But these new components are being identified and separated out, and I think that's a really healthy thing for Nostra in general. Yeah, yeah, massively helpful. Yeah, it's just new building blocks. Yeah. Right. We don't know what can be built with compound like this, building this blocks. Things. Building yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Other questions? I think we've got a couple more minutes here for sure. Nope. Yeah. Can you talk more about the trade-off between clients actually running NSEC Bunker themselves or having kind of a third-party custodial service that runs it, especially around new users that when they sign up for a client, they don't actually know what Bunker is? Because I feel like there may be situations where you're signing up for the new service, you don't want to point your users at any third-party custodian I think you just outlined it perfectly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's the, it is that trade-off of ease of getting onboarded customers in the door and like, you know, getting to the value that they're looking for. Um, you know, whether it's a music app or a you know Twitter like app or whatever it is, versus making it easier to sort of, uh, I guess, manage multiple identities or, or that sort of thing. So, in some sense, it's like if you're, if the job is managing identities that you're trying to solve for then that's actually the client you're building, is like the how do you manage all that stuff and, and do those things. Versus every other client, that's not really their job, um, is to manage the stuff. So they, by doing just the really basic stuff, they might only have like a, we create your new accounts on our insect bunker, call it, and the only other thing you can do there is export it, and that's it. Like you can get the key out and you can leave with it, but that's, that's the only other function that they you know, allow you to deal with because that's not really what they do. Yeah, and really, you don't have to run your own NSEC bunker as a client in order to provide that, you know, because they're providing their NSEC to you anyway, unless you really want, like, a backup of it that's server-side somewhere, you can just hold the NSEC in memory in the client and then eject later uh, and provide a good flow for choosing an identity provider at that point. Like, the way I would do it probably, if I were to actually run a NSEC bunker instance, would be to say, like, you know, just... Sign up, we'll keep your key, and if you want, you can select your provider here. Here's the here's the ones we know about, like pick it from a drop down or you know, maybe use NIP eighty nine <laughs> to 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 get recommendations from uh, potentially your social graph, although if you're signing up that that's not bootstrapped yet. But yeah, I think you identified the, the trade offs really well. Yeah, I think that the market will decide that basically and different things will like I don't think Coracle will run an insect bunker. Like it doesn't fit with your paradigm. I think Primal would run an insect bunker. Like it fits with that model uh, and everywhere, everything in between, right? Like CVD is sort of like an insect bunker where <laughs> you can't take your key, right? Uh, it, it, it's sort of like like that. So it would be within the within this spectrum of he doesn't like Coracle would not run an insect bunker. To Primal would run an insect bunker and maybe onboard. Because one of the things that you can do with the NSEC bunker is tell it, generate a key and authorize my key, like the key that is telling you, hey, generate a key, authorize it to do things. So Primal could onboard users, never see their NSEC, have a local key that allows them to, allows Primal to function. So for the user, they don't see anything weird. The flow is exactly the same. 
but Primal at no point had custody of, of that NSEC. Um, yeah, and you know, if you couch this in terms of like sign in with uh, buttons, um, it'd be really easy to, uh, to make this one of those categories that is just monolithic in people's minds, but actually has a diversity of, of uh, implementations. Um, you know, you don't have to uh, choose a provider necessarily. Uh, you, can, you can leave it open-ended uh, and just have a really good user experience, so. Uh, and the cool thing is that I actually really like this. Um, when, when I implemented this, the, the fact that you use Noster for, for the communication with the back end means that you get like hole punch, you, you can go through the firewall for free. <laughs> like there is, there is an entire company that is built around the idea of hole punching through a, through a firewall. Uh, if you want to access your Umbral on Lightning, um, your Lightning through Umbral, uh, you probably need to use Tor because otherwise how are you going to reach into the DLND or the CLN? Um, this gives you that for free. Right? Instead of connecting to an IP, you connect to a pub key. So it's like, like data, data centric networking kind. Yeah, when we were, I, I think you and me and G Sovereignty were talking about this uh, maybe in Miami and, you know, I brought up the idea of a, you know, because JavaScript, the way JavaScript works, you put things on a queue and then the event loop picks them up. So you have asynchronous programming and, and no, no parallel uh, programming. And, um, and uh, I was just like, oh, you could do that with Noster. Like relays could just be that queue that uh, you stick stuff on. Wouldn't it be funny if someone implemented uh, JavaScript on Noster? Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> G and, and Pablo laughed, but I remember seeing like a glint in your eye, like <laughs> I'm already planning this. <laughs> oh my God. Pain and destruction. Any last question? We've got time for, I guess, one more. Or we can just be done. All right, good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for the great questions.